Inspection and palpation are very useful tests when assessing an athlete with hamstring pain. So first it's important to have the hamstring adequately exposed, so assessing the athlete ideally in their underwear is, uh, is the best way to go. Having a general observation of the hamstring I think is essential, so you'll often pick up some bruising, sometimes some wasting and sometimes some asymmetry, so I think that's a very important part of the test. Then I start by palpating around the proximal hamstring at the ischial tuberosity, so that can be a cause of pain. Uh, particularly insidious onset hamstring pain causes proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Athletes with a more acute injury more typically will have tenderness within the hamstring muscle belly itself and we can palpate those. Occasionally we can palpate a defect in the muscle. A defect or a more significant problem up around the proximal hamstring is a very significant injury. More distally around the knee we can directly visualise the distal hamstring tendons so if we get you to pull up against me, Jesse, we can see the tendons and we can palpate those as they insert around the knee. So laterally we've got biceps femoris and medially we've got semimembranosus and semitendinosus. So a nice easy way to assess hamstring flexibility is to have a look at a straight leg raise. So uh, asking whether there's any pain or problems with that. I also like to measure the hamstring angle. So to do that I flex the hip up to 90 degrees and then I extend the knee until I'm unable to extend any further and I'll measure the distance from the vertical. So I would document that as a hamstring angle of negative 40 degrees. Obviously important to compare with the other side. Having assessed the appearance of the hamstring, it's important to do some functional tests and assess the strength of the hamstring. So with the patient lying prone, we can do a, a leg curl. So if you pull your heel up against me, hard as you can, and I like to do that in several different positions. And then relax. And obviously we compare to the other side. So we're looking, is this movement painful? Is there weakness with hamstring contractions? When there's a more proximal source of pain, I like to do a hamstring bridging exercise. So if we could get you to roll over onto your back. So to do this, I ask the athlete to flex their hip up and put their heel up on my shoulder. And what I want you to do is to try and crush me down with your heel. So is that a painful thing? Is there any obvious weakness with that movement? And obviously a comparison with the other side is important. And I think that test is useful with patients who present with proximal hamstring pain. Not all patients presenting with an acute hamstring injury will have a muscle tear. And quite a useful test to help uh, distinguish between patients that have a tear or a more functional problem is a slump test. So Jesse, if we get you to pop your hands behind your, your back, chin down on your chest, slumping down like you're in you have the worst posture in the world. So we bring the patient's ankle into dorsiflexion and straighten their knee, so bring their knee into extension, and we're asking whether that reproduces anything like their pain. If that does, we ask them to look up at the ceiling. Does that improve your pain? And then chin back down, does that bring your pain back on? And so often this position will reproduce hamstring symptoms in patients that may not have a, an acute muscle tear. So when the athletes recovered from their hamstring injury and you're considering a return to sport and a return to football, uh, it's useful to conduct some functional assessments. So an assessment for the absence of tenderness, an assessment of hamstring power, and some football specific tests are important. But there are also some tests we can do in our rooms. Astling's described a functional test involving passive and active hip flexion, which can be quite useful. So for this test, Ideally the contralateral side, the, the leg that's not affected, is stabilised on the bed using a seatbelt uh, and I'm going to pretend to be the seatbelt using my hand. We're going to ask Jesse to passively flex his hip up towards him. So if you just lift your leg up, bring it through a full range, any pain or problems there. So it's important to make sure that it's not a painful movement and so I like to add a little bit of extra pressure, any pain or problems with that. So then again, imagining we've got a seatbelt here, we're going to ask him to repeat that movement as actively and as quickly and powerfully as he can. So when you're feeling ready, Jesse, can you have a go with that? And again. So if the, if the patient has any pain or apprehension, then you should be very reluctant to uh, send them back to the football field.